They're out in the Oregon wilderness having the adventure of their lives. An adventure that has its usual share of life's little problems. Ow, Kara! I hate this. I want to go back. But little problems don't seem quite so important when one big problem shakes their world. Left to fend for themselves. I told you we should stop. It's too dark. We can't stop. It's cold. He's out there. Do you think he's still alive? Forced to overcome their differences. Who put you in charge? And challenged to conquer their own fears. Adam, he's alive. We found him. Oh, he's alive. Just hold him, okay? Might as well give up. He stopped breathing. He stopped breathing. All right, CPR. Here we go. It's not fair. We did everything right. Everything! Sometimes, the greatest adventure of all comes from within. White Wolves, a cry in the wild, too. The war rages out of control. David Carradine is a renegade colonel who takes matters into his own hands. I will do anything I have to to win this war. We gotta find a way to hit him. It hurts. Sir, I can give you a highly motivated top-notch team. Cross-the-border operations are not sanctioned by the president. The side of that ridge is Cambodia. Once we cross that border, we no longer exist. It was a time for boys to become men, and men to become heroes. Starring Academy Award nominee David Carradine and one of the greatest football players of all time, Tony Dorsett.
Buenas noches, damas y caballeros. No. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, the main attraction. The man who brings you satisfaction. Whatever the measure, I bring you the pleasure. If you got what it takes to take what I got. <laughs> Live from LA, the one and only Hector Salinas. <sighs> Hola, como esta? How you doing? Fine, thank you. I'm okay. Uh, you know, you're looking pretty good yourself too, baby. No te acuestes a dormir sin tomar un cucurucho de maní. Marquette Galleries is proud to announce a group show featuring Suzanne Copeland. Hmm. I got a group I like to show Suzanne Copeland. We're very proud to have Suzanne Copeland's first one-woman show in the Los Angeles area. The recurring themes in her work are man's treatment of the environment and cruelty to animals, such as in this anti-vivisection piece. One of my favorite pieces is this particular piece, where she's showing through the use of three dimensions how man's structures are imposed upon the natural environment. You guys are doing a great job. It sounds great. They'd like to hear the music in the next room, please. Thank you. Suzanne, don't you think you're overdoing it a little there? It's just an act, Robbie. These people don't think an artist has any talent unless they have a tragic flaw. This is not the mad tea party. This is your art opening. Couldn't you have dressed more appropriately? My paintings are for sale. I'm not. I can't relate to these people. Then relate to their money. They don't know art. They know enough to respect my judgment. Great. Then it's best that you handle them. Take it easy. Holy shit. <laughs> Look at you. What's that feel like to you, amigo? Money. Dinero. Si, sí, me gusta. Vamos. There's a lot of pretty ones out there tonight, you know? Uh, they all taste the same. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, you have to count it? Personal, man. Okay. Bueno. Ciao, okay? Ave Maria, que coño me pasó aquí? Fucking criminals. Coño! Coño! Who the fuck are you, man? What do you want from me? Wait a minute! 
No, wait a minute, please. What's going on here? Where's the rest of it, Hector? What are you talking about, man? Have a look. Man, this is a rented box! I figured it was you and Marquette. Let me go back inside, okay? I'll get the rest of your stuff. Please. Shut him up. for Mr. Marquette. Could you point him out to me? Thank you. Mr. Marquette. Yes? I represent a very wealthy buyer who is interested in the uh, Copeland paintings. So if you don't mind, I'd like a few moments of your time someplace more private. Certainly. Follow me to my office. Thank you. you, Mr. Uh, I'll stand, if you don't mind. Which collector is it you represent, if I may ask? Hector says you have something that belongs to me. And who the hell are you anyway? I'm the man you should never have fucked with. Jesus, what the fuck? Are you crazy? Did you and Hector really think you could take from me and get away with it? Bobby? This is Special Problems Unit 24. Can you give me an ID on that 1020? Incident took place at Marquette Art Gallery. 104. How's she doing? Pretty good. You know, she is really one lucky lady. Listen, I'll uh, I'll be by the hospital in the morning for a follow-up. Okay. Paige. I think you should come and see this. Poor old Hector Salinas. What do you know, this guy? Who doesn't? Well, it looks like he tried to move up in the world. Somebody slapped him down. Salinas? This far uptown? All dressed up in a rented tux. The guy was in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, I pretty much worked that out on my own. Tell me something I don't know. My guess? It's a professional job. Don't go broadcasting that page. You hear what I'm saying? These yuppies get awfully nervous if they think the mob's dumping dirty laundry in their backyard. I said it was only a guess. Yeah? How about working up a little enthusiasm for some facts? 
I should have something for you in about an hour. Don't bother to show your face, Paige, unless you got something I can take upstairs. I got an eyewitness. Is that good enough for you? I've got good news and bad news. You just tell me she's going to pull through. Oh, well, don't worry. She's stabilized. But considering the amount of blood she's lost, I don't think that she should be disturbed for at least another 24 hours. Fine. We'll be back tomorrow with an identikit. Uh, fellas, that's the bad news. She's blind. After speaking with staff here at the hospital, a shroud of secrecy still prevails over the condition of artist Suzanne Copeland, the sole survivor of a brutal gangland-style attack which left two men dead. Lieutenant Page, has Miss Copeland given you a description of her attacker yet? I can't comment while the matter's still under investigation. Is it true police suspect organized crime is involved? Well, as you can see, homicide detectives who are on the scene are reluctant to provide much information. We will, of course, give you updates as further details come in. You did a real fine job on Hector. But there's one small detail left that needs to be taken care of. I'll level with you, Doctor. Whoever killed Salinas and Marquette is probably going to try and finish the job on Suzanne Copeland. Here in the hospital? Well, where do you think? <laughs> it already went out over television that we've got an eyewitness ready to point the finger. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to alert the entire staff. I can save us both a lot of hassles if you let us move her out of here right now. No, absolutely not. Not in her present condition. I can't permit that. Will you at least let us move her to another part of the hospital? We could, yes, but I don't see how that solves our predicament. You leave that to me. All I need is a nurse who doesn't get rattled easily. Now that I can help you with. You can't run. You can't hide. It's just you and me. And six inches that'll guarantee I have your undivided attention. So if you don't do what I say, I'll stick you. The more you resist, the more I'm going to get off on it. If you were a man, you wouldn't waste so much time on talk and bullshit. Well. Maybe you'd like to show us how it's done. OK. Tyler, show her how it's done. Okay. Okay. This could be fun. You really want me to do this, huh? I, I don't want to hurt you or anything. What, are you afraid I'm too much for you? Ow. <laughs> now, if I kept twisting, I could break his arm. But I think I'd rather. <laughs> you know something, Tyler? I'm beginning to like her. Nurse Allison, Lieutenant Page. How do you do? Fine. And Sergeant Tyler. Would you like a hand up, Sergeant Tyler? I need at least five more men. I gave you two. Come on, I want to double up on the shifts, and I definitely need a floater at night. Two is all you get. Hey, I don't think you're getting the picture here. I got the picture, Paige. We all saw it on television. I warned you. I said all hell would break loose if the right people got the wrong notion about organized crime. So what you're telling me is that my witness doesn't get any extra protection because you got to slap my wrist? If I give you one extra man, it'll look to them like I'm backing you up. You know this precinct is understaffed, and I got news for you, pal. You ain't the only case in town. You're just gonna have to trust me on this. That's exactly what you said two years ago with the Baxter case. Don't leave that one on me, Paige. You fucked me over once, Sullivan. Well, don't go thinking you can make a habit of it just so you can kiss brass. You're kidding. You've never heard of La Lengua Rica. No, I have never heard of La Lingua Rica. Rica. This is going to be fun. Uh, okay, no, wait, 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 wait. That's just the beginning. Now comes the best part to when I, um... <laughs> when the pasta you are unbelievable. Uh, look, hold that thought until I get back to you, all right? Excuse me, but I really think you need to brush up on your social graces. A simple let's go would have been fun. What does it take to get you to keep your mind on your job, huh? 
What is your problem? Sullivan blew you off, right? Why the hell are you getting pissed off at me? Because I'm not getting any help here. I already got my hands full with a murder investigation, but now if I want my witness protected, I got to do it myself. Why do I have these bandages on my eyes? You suffered a blow to your right temple. I wish there were a more gentle way to tell you this, but the trauma from that blow has damaged your optic nerves. What are you saying? I'm saying that you've suffered the loss of your eyesight. This may be a temporary oh, no. condition, but I don't want oh, to build no. false hope. No, no, don't no, touch, no, Don't touch no, your bandages. No. Get them off of my... Nurse said Get it, them please. off of my eyes. I'll get them off, but please, you just lie still. Lie still. Oh, no, 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 Fall asleep. You fall asleep now. Can I ask you a question? Where do you get the idea you're all alone in this? Look, Tyler, it's nothing personal, okay? But what I need right now is a partner who can keep a tight focus on the situation. What, did I get my gold shield in a Cracker Jacks box? You know, I did transfer here. I have been doing this for a while. But what'd I say? It's nothing personal. Just let it go. Just because you and I moved to a different beat doesn't mean I'm less serious about my work. Yeah, Tyler, you passed all the tests. You know the procedure. But what you don't know is how to cut through the bullshit. So, show me. Long time between haircuts, huh? Normally I work vice, filling in, man shortage. Gotta get down to log in the Copeland woman. You know how it is, fucking paperwork. Hey, I just came down from the Pullman here and I can tell you, there's no change in her status since morning, if that's any help. Oh, yeah.
security staff. Somebody just tried to take out the Copeland woman. And now what we got because of you is a dead cop. You're out of line, Lieutenant. Now you're the one fucking out of line here. When you give this to his wife, why don't you tell her she's a widow because you couldn't spare the manpower. Paige, get back here. Lieutenant. We tried it your way, Sullivan. Now we're gonna do it mine. You don't come back here, I'll have your ass up on charges. They tricked me, the fucks! You lost the gun. How could you let that happen? That's a bitch there, man. She wasn't no nurse. Oh, God, look what she done to me. You're gonna have to get me to a doctor, man. Right. We'll take you right back to the hospital. Have them patch you up. Your leg ain't the one fucking on fire here. You're gonna have to do something. Come on. something in the bathroom that should have And get them all next time around. Fucking wipe them out. <laughs> you watch. Find the vein. Those fucks. Hey, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me boot it. Sullivan is going to take us both off at the knees for this. Uh, he has to find us first. Where are you taking me? Rolling Meadows. It's about two hours outside of L.A. <laughs> That's ironic. Why? Rolling Meadows is an artist colony. Very nice. I'm impressed. When it comes to protective custody, I like your style. Rebecca, why don't you take Suzanne to the back bedroom and get her settled in? If you want to freshen up, there's a bathroom off the hall. I'll bring the bags back in a minute. I'm curious. Maybe it's me, but how does a detective lieutenant come by a place like this? You want to give me a hand with this? Come on. 
What's the big secret? There's no secret. It belongs to my wife's family, okay? Your wife? <laughs> I don't understand you. Why can't you tell me these things? Because I need you to concentrate on more important things, like your job, for one. Maybe you need to concentrate on being more of a partner. Because I think I could do a hell of a better job if you didn't always play it so close to the chest. <laughs> what? That's exactly what my wife used to say. Hey, at least we're making progress. I'm starting to sound like your wife. Or is that bad? Did you two split up? She died two years ago. So why don't you go into town, get some pizzas, uh, maybe a couple bottles of wine? Listen, uh, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to put you on the spot like that about your wife. Don't worry about it. Everything okay in there? Leave me alone! Yeah, I'm sorry, I heard you crying. I said leave me alone! Hey, hey. No, no! It's okay. No! 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 I just don't like the way this thing's adding up. Rebecca, you're saying that the man who attacked you at the hospital is young, muscular, and probably ripped on drugs. Suzanne, your assailant was middle-aged, average height and build, and looked more like an ordinary businessman? Well, obviously, we're working against a tag team here. Absolutely. <sighs> Suzanne, if you could give us something more specific to go on, it would help us a lot. I can still see his face. I know his face. Uh, do you have a pencil or a pen? Can maybe I can draw? Maybe I can. I can see it so clearly. He had a kind of a rectangular shaped face. And his eyes were... <laughs> no, I can still see his eyes. Hey, don't sweat it. And we got other leads to go on. This whole thing's not on your shoulders. So what are these other leads you haven't been telling me about? Well, just normal stuff, Tyler. Would you relax? I was just telling her that to make her feel better. Oh. Well, I do have one of our guys checking to see if anybody's received treatment for a gunshot wound. And I got him running a make on the piece we found at the scene. And I got a weird feeling about that. If we get lucky, something might turn up. I don't know. I've got a crazy idea. Why don't I go up to L.A. and work on these leads? Because I need you here. That's right. I forgot I'm sorry to make pizza runs. Paige, come on. In L.A., I can do all the legwork, and you can still call the shots from here. You don't give up, do you? No. Not while we can make a move on this thing instead of sitting around waiting for it to roll over on us. Even with Sullivan ready to uh, 
take you off at the knees? It's too late. You got the play in motion already. Hand me the ball, partner. Maybe I'll surprise you. Make an end around, Sullivan. When you get to L.A., I want you to look up Sergeant Breslin in the property room. You ask him if he's got anything for me. Baldwin, right? Dr. Baldwin, yes. I'm trying to locate the Copeland woman, Suzanne Copeland. And you are? Sullivan. Captain Sullivan, 24th Precinct. Look, I released her to Lieutenant Page, Captain. Where has he taken her? He didn't tell me. Quite frankly, the staff and I are relieved to be spared the responsibility. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Don't you guys talk to each other? One, two, three, four, five. Center of the room. Now what? Rebecca? Sorry. Where do I go now? Well, to your left, about 10 feet are the French windows. They overlook the grounds. And to your right, about 10 feet is the, the kitchen. Uh -huh. I smell coffee. Unless I'm wrong, someone's cooking French roast. You stay right here. I'm going to go get us both a cup before we go any further. Need any help making breakfast? <laughs> How does cold pizza sound? Uh, what's the matter? Aren't there any donuts? <laughs> well, Tyler took the car to L.A. early this morning. There's no way for us to get into town to do any shopping. Well, this is a fine mess you've gotten us into, Ollie. There's no chance you know anything about horses, is there? Back in Eureka County, would you believe I'm queen of the barrel racers? The question is, Rebecca, what is it that you don't do? <laughs> I'll let you know when I find out. Here's the list of groceries I got for you. I hope you can decide from my handwriting. She is amazing. <laughs> uh, well, here, take my arm. I'll, uh, I'll lead you back to the house. No, please, no. The air smells so clean out here, and I can feel the sun. Don't coop me up in the house again, please, not just yet. All right. Uh, come on. Too bad I can't give you the grand tour of the place. Improvise. I think I've been in L.A. too long. I've almost forgotten what flowers smell like. L.A. will do that to you. You don't spend much time out here, do you? What makes you say that? I don't know. Something in your voice about the way you describe the place. Well, there's, uh, there's a caretaker who looks after everything, and the girl down the road takes care of the horse. There's not much need for me to be around here anymore. Now that your wife is gone? You still miss her a great deal, don't you? It uh, sneaks up on me from time to time, yeah. Whenever that happens, I usually just pile on the work. She died, didn't she? Come on, let's go up that way. 
That's uh, six steps. Be careful. Take the first one. Up. Two. Three. Two more. There you go. Back here. So, show me. Show me the money. I'll show you the gun. This is too easy. And last night you said you could still see the man's face, so I, uh, I came up with an idea. What is this? Well, it's clay. Clay? Where did you get this? Uh, try lugging that with 10 pounds of groceries on horseback. Look, we're not asking for miracles. I just thought maybe you could give it a shot. I was a painter, Paige. I don't do sculpture. Listen, I know it's difficult for you. I just thought maybe if you could actually feel something, it might make a difference to you. No, I don't have any experience at this. There are too many ways that I could screw up. Well, I brought all the tools and I'll be here if you need any help. Hey, if nothing else, it's a great hobby, right? All right, all right. Well, the only thing that I really know is that you have to first make the clay pliable. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Look, I'll, uh, I'll leave the two of you alone. You can have at it. Mm, that cuts like a hot knife through butter. Mm. Yeah. Take the top. Thanks. So, what did the two of you get up to after you got me out of the way? We walked around the grounds for a while. Paige is a sad man. He's still not over the death of his wife. What can I say? I've been busy, but I'd seriously like to explore what you're talking about. Tyler, you know I've been available. I mean, if you want to Tyler? Maybe... Oh, but not now. Oh, I want to know what Paige did with the witness. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I didn't hear you. Did you want me? Just talk to me, Tyler. Well, if you're referring to the Copeland case, we're close to our first break. Looks like we're way ahead of you, Tyler. We found the killer this morning. The coroner's got him now. So you just pass along whatever you got and close out this case. What? You get your witness back here today. And I want proper ID and a full paperwork on my desk by morning. I don't think I can do that. You see, whoever you've got in the morgue is part of a tag team. You close out the case. I'll handle a damage control. <sighs> Captain, you're asking us to bring our witness out into the open. Pardon me for pushing this, but as long as the other half of the tag team is out there, she's still a target. Ask yourself, how is refusing a direct order going to look on your file? Oh, how'd you make out with Breslin? Well, he's pulling the graveyard shift, so it's gonna be a bit of a wait. I'll get to him then. Well, just hang in there, partner. What I'm hoping is he's gonna confirm what I already suspect. Fill me in. If I'm right, the gun we found at the hospital is the same one used in the Baxter case. What's the Baxter case? It's not important. You just hope I'm wrong. Why? Because if I'm right, 
It looks like we're going up against a dirty cop. So what are you going to do when all this is over? I don't know. I'm, uh... I certainly won't be much of an artist without my eyes, will I? So what would you do if you couldn't be a cop? I don't know. I'd probably go back to playing the clarinet. A musician. Certainly more to you than meets the eye. Well, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I was okay. Not great, but I did okay. I played my share of gigs. I was trying to survive in jazz clubs. <sighs> Jesus. It was a long time ago. I did pretty good. <laughs> I did better than pretty good, considering that's how I met my wife. Careful, big step up. She'd always track me down. Got a front row seat. Here, sit. <laughs> and I'm up there on stage, right? The spot's on me. And all I'm doing, I'm, I'm just concentrating like anything on the music. Just focused. She said that's the only time I ever really came out of myself. Do you still play? I still have the clarinet, but I... I haven't touched it since she died. What happened to her? I... Uh, I'm working on this case two years ago. Trying to nail this drug dealer named Baxter. I start to get pretty close. Obviously a little too close, because he decides to come after me, try and take me out. Only I don't know this. Well, the cop who's heading up the investigation, his name is Sullivan. He knows. But he doesn't tell me. He, uh... He doesn't give me any protection. He doesn't cover my back. He just sends me out there all alone. It's a decoy. It's how bad he wants to collar this guy just to get a promotion. The rest of the guys on the team, they think I volunteered. You know, the funny thing is, I, I probably would have volunteered. It would have been just me. Go on. One night, I'm... Uh, I'm out with my wife. It's, uh, <laughs> it's her birthday, right? So I, I take her to a nice restaurant on the beach one of our favorite places. After dinner, we're walking back to the car. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing because she talked me into getting all dressed up. We just had a bottle of champagne. Feeling pretty romantic. I walk into her side of the car and open her door for her. wife in the car and I start walking toward the driver's side. I hear somebody call me. And there's Baxter and two guys with automatic weapons getting out of a van. Next thing I know, Sullivan's on the bullhorn out of nowhere telling everybody to freeze. It's unreal. Everything stands still. I motion for my wife to get down. I take cover behind the car. And some asshole panics and starts shooting. Then all hell breaks loose. Please, I just want to know what she saw. I'm gonna have to take it slowly. Getting back to the house. 
It's dark out here. I can't see too well myself. Sergeant Breslin? Yeah? I'm Detective Sergeant Tyler. Oh, Paige's new part. Where's he been these past few days? He's a little tied up. Listen, Look, I, I just got some coffee. It's fresh. Have a cup. I won't take no for an answer. I apologize. I have no cream and sugar. Black is fine, all right? But I do have some. Cookies! Oh, hey. I, I got chocolate <laughs> chips and... Peter. No, really, it's okay. I, I only like Oreos. You probably don't have Oreos, so it's... We aim to please here. <laughs> Eat um, to your heart's content. Amazing. I should have brought my grocery list. Uh... <laughs> Listen, did you come up with anything on that gun that Paige talked to you about? Well, it's the Baxter gun. A real rare piece. The gun they found at the hospital and the Baxter gun are one and the same. Really? What's so special about this gun? Let me see it. Oh, Captain Sullivan's got it. Why? Well, I don't know. Ask Kim. Came down here and he confiscated it. When did he do this? Uh, 23, 30 hours yesterday, right during the change of watch. Said something about um, wanting to conduct an inspection. <laughs> So the gun's logged out to Captain Sullivan. No, no, he, he just said he wanted to borrow it for a minute. I haven't seen him since then. All this shows is who comes in and out of the cage. It says there he was inside the cage? Sure, anyone captain and above. And he confiscated it, but he didn't sign it out. What the log shows is that the gun is still on the shelf, right along with uh, the other stuff. What other stuff? Uh, well, it's an attache case and about um, two keys of cocaine. <laughs> so, supposedly, the cocaine is still there, too. I know what you're saying, but don't even think about it. Ah, oh, come on. Let's take a look at it. I can't, Tyler. I got two months and 12 days left before I pull the pin. If I let you in here and somehow somebody finds out, I get canned. I lose my pension. No, I, I can't let you inside a restricted area. Okay. Okay, fine. But uh, twice now the gun is gone, missing. If the same thing happened with the cocaine, who do you think they're going to point the finger at? Hmm. Yeah. taking a big risk doing this for you, Tyler. I know, and I want you to know, Sergeant Bleson, that I think I'm falling in love with you. I'm kidding, it's a joke. If it wasn't for Paige, I wouldn't be doing this at all. You guys are the only one here. I just want to make sure. You see? You were wrong. Wait, 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 just give me a minute here. Let me see something. You got a narco band kit? Hey, 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 you, you can't tamper with evidence, Tyler. How else are we going to find out? You want to do it? No. Uh, you go ahead. I'll get the number. Okay. Cocaine? Oh, it's 
Smells like milk sugar. The whole two keys, I'll bet. Sweet Jesus. They're really gonna fuck me if anybody finds out. No wonder Sullivan pushed so hard for us to close this case. He didn't want us to dig down so deep and have all this surface. No, no, it, it won't wash. They'll, they'll just think Paige is trying to shaft Sullivan. For what? The Baxter case, two years ago. I don't get it. Well, you know that Sullivan got promoted at Paige's expense. Sullivan set him up. Paige's wife got killed. I was there. Paige got charged with neglect of duty and sent before Board of Rights. Fortunately, Board cleared him after they heard my testimony that he'd been used as a decoy without his, his knowledge. That bastard Sullivan, that's when he pulled me out of the field and put me inside. If we're gonna nail Sullivan, we're gonna have to prove he had access to this stuff. Oh, my God. You don't mean you want two years of my log sheets and inventory slips? So, are you gonna tell me what happened last night between you and Paige, or what? We talked. Talked? <laughs> Darn, I was hoping you'd have made more progress than that by now. Rebecca, give it a break. Breslin, my man. Oh, here you go, Tyler. Two years worth of log sheets and inventory slips. And let me tell you, I had one bitch of a time sneaking these out of the property room. <laughs> made a big bulge under my coat. Well, whatever you want, you got it. I owe you one. Don't mention it, kid. Listen, uh, I got a lot of work to do. Paige and I, we're gonna take you out for a night on the town. All this cloak and dagger crap. Look, say hello to Paige for me, will you? I'm gonna call him right now, tell him you really came through for us. Oh. We're gonna nail Sullivan. Thank you. I was just ordering a pizza. You like anchovies? Why? Sullivan, I want him to go down hard with nothing. So I frame him with the Baxter cocaine and a few homicides. You see, I get him both ways, and the money's mine. Only I never figured you and Paige would get involved. I'm sorry, kid. This is Sergeant Tyler. Check the backwards book and come up with the address for this number. 
Come on, I have a surprise for you. No, wait. Let me do it. It's very good. <laughs> All right, now stay right there. Wait a minute. I think I already know what you want to show me. Then pretend to be surprised. You know something? Giving you that clay was a hell of a good idea, if I do say so myself. Are you finished? Yeah. Go ahead. Let her rip. Ta -da! I'm sorry, Paige. It's business.
Thank you.